What's going on YouTube? Mike here with another video and today I wanted to revisit a tablet from over a year ago to let you know if it's still worth it in 2020 and how it's held up. So let's get into it. All right, so the tablet I wanted to revisit is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S4. Now I did my original review of this, which I'll post as an in-card at the end of this video if you want to watch it, but I did that back in 2018. So I've had this for about a year and a half, almost two years now, and it's held up really well. So the design really looks the same as the current gen that they have out now, whether you get the S5e or the Galaxy Tab S6. They essentially look the same um, other than internals. They didn't change a whole lot, but the hardware of this <clears throat> has held up well. No issues with battery drain or device slowdown. So as I mentioned in my initial review, this has got a 10 and a half inch AMOLED display. It's got one USB type C port headphone jack, and that's it for the ports. Um, one thing that I've not liked about this as I've used it for so long is the iris scan to unlock. So it works as long as you're in a well lit area, but it, if it's a dark room or you're laying in bed at night, the iris scan's not going to see. It's not going to work. So I wish Samsung initially would have included a way to unlock it with your fingerprint, which would have been way more convenient. One thing that I've really enjoyed using this for the, almost the past two years now ultimately has been the screen. The screen, like I mentioned, it's a 10 and a half inch display. It's super AMOLED. The screen is vibrant. It's bright. It's really been a joy to use. All right, so let's talk about, again, I guess kind of some of the negatives of this device. And it was really negatives when it came out uh, almost two years ago was when this came out, it launched in around, it was summertime 2018. So this launched with the Snapdragon 835 in it, which at the time, the 845 was already out. So this at launch was already rocking an, an older processor. So one thing I will say for this though, for my workload, what I do, I haven't noticed anything that's kind of choked it up, slowed it down. So there's really not a whole lot that I noticed um, that this tablet couldn't do that I wanted to do. This also had four gigs of RAM, which still has four gigs of RAM. It came in two size variants for storage. You could get 64 or 256. Uh, this one's a 64 gigabyte model, which I've never ran out of storage with this thing in almost two years, especially because this does have a micro SD slot. So I'm able to just expand the storage if I need it with a micro SD. It's cheap, it's convenient, and it's one thing that I do like over Samsung tablets over, say, the iPad Pro. So having used this for almost two years, I will say that, that I haven't noticed any battery degradation. I mean, when I got this, you were I was getting anywhere from six to eight hours of battery, depending on what I'm doing. I haven't really had to test the endurance of this but it's never died on me. So I would say the battery life, I'm still getting at least seven hours of battery life. So let's talk about the performance after two years. A lot of people claim or used to claim that Android phones and tablets will slow down over time. They just get laggy and buggy. And I will say that was probably the case five years ago, but um, since then, I don't think that's the case any longer. Like I said, this thing still performs just as well as the day I bought it. So it's just as snappy, just as fast. Haven't noticed any lag or anything like that. So performance is still rock solid. As far as performance goes, I still use DeX on this a fair amount and still runs fine. No issues with DeX. The biggest issue with this tablet, to be honest, after two years is not the tablet itself. It's not the hardware. It is Samsung itself and their lack of software updates for this thing. So this is still rocking um, Android 9. It is scheduled, however, to get Android 10, but I don't know when. I think the last forums that I checked, it's saying that this could possibly get it in September, so the end of summer. So with that, again, I'm still rocking Android 9, uh, One UI 1, I think it is. But I do think once this gets Android 10 and uh, One UI 2.0, that of course that has some improvements with DeX and I think it's going to improve the tablet overall quite a bit. So if you do have this and you're thinking about upgrading, honestly, once this gets Android 10 
I think you could probably get another year out of this easy. Um, but unfortunately, the way Samsung is with updates, the last, once this gets Android 10, I don't think it's ever going to get Android 11. It's just the nature of Samsung. Unfortunately, to me, that's one area where Apple just kicks Samsung's butts is with their update. Apple supports their devices, whether it be iPhones or iPads, for way longer than Samsung does when it comes to software updates, updating the entire OS. Um, so Samsung, as always, is lacking in that department. Now, since I've had this device, I've had the keyboard case for it and the S Pen. And as far as uh, durability go, I've had no issues with that. With the pen or the keyboard, um, rock solid. I've used this quite a bit. I've traveled with this a lot uh, during the past uh, year and a half. So no issues with the durability. As you can see, it still looks essentially brand new. It might have a little bit of dirt on it, but this thing has held up really well. So no complaints with durability. All right, so the big question with this tablet is, should you buy it? So obviously, when this tablet launched, it was about $700 for the LTE model, which is what I have here. Now, honestly, for an Android tablet, that was pretty expensive, but you can pick these up now. You have to search around. So whether you go to eBay or Amazon or B&H, they're still showing, I just checked this morning on Amazon for about $400. So the price can vary from seller to seller, but average around $400. Now, honestly, I think if you were to pick this up for $400, you're probably paying too much. Um, so I think it's a great tablet, but again, with the slow updates, probably only going to get one more update. I don't know if I would pay $400 for it. Um, if you can pick this up secondhand for, I would say around $300, then that's pretty good. So, um, 300, maybe up to 400 max, but anything over $400, I would pass on this tablet and just get the next gen. Okay, so there you have it. I just wanted to revisit this tablet because in all actuality, it's been a really good tablet. And like I said, I've kept this for almost two years, which is kind of rare for me. I kind of go through tech pretty quick. I usually upgrade fairly fast, but this has lasted me two years and it's been rock solid. So it's definitely been a good investment for me. And like I mentioned, I wouldn't necessarily get this now unless you get a good price on it because this is probably going to get one more update, which will be Android 10. But after that, it's probably never going to get Android 11. But again, solid tablet if you can get a good price on it. So with that, like I said, nothing's really changed since my initial review, which you can watch at the end of this video. But great, solid, performing tablet. Good job, Samsung. My complaints, as always, are Samsung's lack of updates and just poor optimization of apps on Android for tablets. So as always, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully it helped you out. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell because then you will know when I drop a new video. And as always, if you've not subscribed, please do so. Thanks.